Hello, welcome to video 12, Price Elasticity of Supply. It's the last elasticity that we're looking at and it's, if you like, the odd one out because this is supply, all the others were demand. Oh, I wish that students would read exam questions more carefully because so many times I've seen students read exam questions about this elasticity, price elasticity of supply, and they read it as demand and they write out a whole thing about demand and they get it all wrong and they get a zero and it's such a shame. So, price elasticity of supply is something quite different. It is a measurement of the responsiveness of quantity supplied of a good when its price changes. Okay? So, when the price of a good changes, how easily can the suppliers react? We know that suppliers want to supply more of a good when its price rises. And we know that they want to supply less of a good when its price falls. That's the upward sloping supply curve. But how quickly are suppliers able to react when the price of the good changes? That's what PES is about. If they cannot react quickly, if they can't quickly supply more when the price goes up, or if they can't quickly shut down the supply when the price falls, we say they have inelastic supply. The good has inelastic supply. Of course, we can measure PES with equations, um, and the good news is that this always comes out positive. There's no negatives involved here um, in, in, the, in the values of PES. Let me show you, uh, although you can probably work them out yourself, but let me show you the equations we use to calculate PES. So price elasticity of supply for a good can be calculated by P over Q S times change in quantity S over change in price. I put the S here and here just to remind you that we're looking about the, the quantity supplied and not demanded. But it is, of course, the same equation. Um, uh, or we can say PES is percent change in quantity supplied over percent change in price. Either of these equations lead us to a PES value um, which can be interpreted thus. If it comes out as zero, we say perfectly inelastic supply. Now that's unusual, maybe it's only theoretically possible, but if it comes out as zero, perfectly inelastic supply, and that means that when the price changes, there is no reaction at all in quantity supply. The supplier just carries on producing the same amount as before. If the value of PES lies between zero and one, we say inelastic supply, the supplier reacts to the price change, but in a proportionately smaller way. One is unitary elasticity, meaning supp quantity supply changes in precisely the same proportion as price changed. Above one, and it's elastic supply, meaning, of course, that uh, the supply react, or the quantity supplied reacts by a greater proportion than price. Um, and ultimate, uh, ultimately, it could be infinity, perfectly elastic supply. The slightest, smallest change in price leads to a complete collapse of all the quantity supplied, the ultimate insensitivity to a price change. We can show different kinds of supply curves. Um, S, and, and these are numbered according to the same uh, uh, on the previous page. So, so there's the previous page. So this will be S1, S2, S3, S4, S5. So S1, perfectly inelastic. Just, just visualize that supply curve there. If the price is here, this is the quantity. If the price goes up to here, it's the same quantity. There's no reaction in quantity. Whatever the price is, it's the ultimate in the lack of sensitivity to price change. It's perfectly inelastic supply. And just the other extreme, perfectly elastic supply. They own, only supply, supply only happens at this price. Any change from that price, there's no supply. So vertical is perfectly inelastic, horizontal is perfectly elastic. Now, any supply curve that runs through the quantity axis is inelastic. Any supply curve, whatever the gradient, running through the vertical axis is elastic. And any supply curve running through the origin of this curve is unitary elasticity throughout its length. Okay, so moving on. I think this is, the most this is the most important point when it comes to price elasticity of supply. The issue of commodities. Commodities, which are any naturally occurring uh, substance, uh, not a manufactured product, but a commodity will be agricultural goods, 
and also uh, natural resources mined from the earth or grown timber, cork, um, and fossil fuels, of course, uh, metals. All of these are commodities. Now, commodities are notorious for their inelastic supply. So very, very often in examinations, uh, commodity markets are explored uh, as a testing ground for testing your knowledge on price elasticity of supply. So th this is very, very relevant. So commodities usually have extremely inelastic supply. It's not easy for farmers or mining companies, etc., to react quickly to price changes and change their quantity supplied rapidly. Think about it. Imagine you're a, a farmer, you grow carrots, you've got 10 fields, you've just planted them, and, and the carrots, seeds, or however carrots grow, are, are, are growing. Um, and there you are, you, you're done, you've, you've planted, and now you wait. And let's say it takes, I don't know, a year for the carrots to grow and be harvested and sold. If whatever happens to the price of carrots during that time, you're committed to growing that many carrots. If the price goes way up, you can't instantly have more carrots for sale. You might rush off and plant another field's worth of carrots, but there's nothing, you've got to wait. And if, and if God forbid, doctors discover that eating carrots is very bad for you and no one wants to eat carrots and the price of carrots collapses because there's no demand, what are you going to do about it? You're stuck growing carrots. You can't click your fingers and turn those carrots into potatoes. So you cannot change your supply. That's the, that's the problem for farmers. Mining companies, it's so expensive to explore and locate and get permission to drill and start drilling down for oil, for coal, for gold, whatever, that they can't simply shut down or quickly open up again uh, on a day-to-day -day basis as the price of the, the, of, of the commodity that they are extracting rises or falls. They have to take much, long, much longer term commitments and do not react and cannot react quickly when prices change. So commodities have this very inelastic supply. The suppliers cannot react quickly. They neither find it easy to store their product in advance, in the case of a price rise, nor to reduce production quickly in the case of a fall in price. Like I said with a carrot farmer, or imagine you're a fruit producer and you produce fresh strawberries. You can't simply have a warehouse full of fresh strawberries that you grew in the past, just waiting for some price rise in the future so you can roll out these fresh strawberries and quickly have them for sale. No, they're going to go off, they're going to go rotten. And even with, with uh, commodities that don't go off, or go off very slowly, coffee beans, cocoa beans, or even fossil fuels like oil or gas, these things are very expensive to store. And it may not be possible, realistically, to produce all of this, store it for long periods of time, securely and safely, uh, in the hope that at some point in the future there will be a rise in the price. It's just not feasible. And so, for this reason, Neither can the, the commodity be stored in advance, nor can production quickly be raised, nor can production be quickly shut down. Um, and this is the root cause of the inelastic uh, supply of these kinds of products. Now, just one last point. Even with commodities, price elasticity of supply becomes more elastic over longer time periods. The longer the time period under consideration, the more elastic is the supply, even with commodities. That carrot farmer, if we're talking about one week, cannot change the supply of their carrots. You know, they're committed to what they're growing. However, if we're talking about five years, well, in that amount of time, I and mean, if the price of carrots permanently goes down, well, certainly over a number of years, they'll be able to reduce the quantity they're supplying because they'll have time to, to finish that crop, go off, prepare the ground, and grow something else in the future. So short, the shorter the period of time under consideration, the more inelastic the supply. The longer the period of time, the more elastic the supply. Now, one last point, just to amuse you. Um, how long does it take for a chicken to grow? Uh, was it an extremely important issue in economics? Well, it is actually, because chicken farmers, you know, they're committed to growing their chickens, um, and it takes about nine months for a chicken to reach full maturity. Uh, a mature chicken, nice concept. But um, 
a chicken takes about nine months to grow to be uh, one kilo. Well, that's, uh, that's expensive for the farmer. And of course, once they're committed to, to growing their chickens, that's it, they've got to grow their chickens. And you know, whatever happens to the price of chickens, they can't react, they're just growing their chickens. And it takes nine months. So hardworking scientists and marketing and economists, these kinds of people um, have worked very hard to uh, shorten that time through um, feeding chickens uh, water retention uh, chemicals in their food so they get bulkier and heavier more quickly, um, 24 hour daylight in their, in their little uh, sheds or battery farms. Um, so that they, um, because chickens, you know, when it's daylight, they have to eat. So if, you, if they, they always think it's daylight, they're always eating. Uh, and, and this bulks up the chickens much more quickly, growth hormones, etc. And these clever people have been able to shorten this nine months uh, into just 37 days. So now a chicken can be made into being one kilo in a matter of just over one month, a month and a day. And uh, that has, of course, increased the elasticity of supply. Because now chicken farmers who make, grow these kinds of chickens, which are, are cheaper to produce, um, uh, have, have more flexibility. They can react more quickly to price changes, can't they? If uh, it only takes 37 days to produce a chicken, a mature chicken. Uh, and, and uh, of course, that's not only, um, as somebody once said to me, that's not only increased the elasticity of supply of the chicken, it's probably increased the elasticity of the chicken as well. Uh, it can't be very tasty. You've got to wonder about the, the quality of such, of such chickens. Those lovely, happy, free-range chickens that run around farms where, where farm wives throw out corn, like in the movies, um, those chickens take nine months to grow, but they're probably much tastier. Um, more inelastic, both in supply and uh, probably in texture as well. Anyway, I don't eat chicken. Uh, I don't know if you do. If you had it for lunch, I apologise. Maybe I should have put a warning at the front of this uh, video. But perhaps the chicken that you ate in your chicken sandwich um, was, uh, was, was, was the more elastic type, both in chicken terms and in supply terms. I think I've gone on enough now. Um, I'd better turn off this video. See you in the next one.